What's up guys, it's Drac. It's time for another Hasbro review. Oh boy. So I slept on this one for a little while and that's because it slept on the boat for a little while. Supply chain issues seem to be hitting the mothership pretty hard recently. So uh, I was excited for flip shots originally. I thought that it was a cool concept and a good gimmick. Again, I've said this a hundred times, but I'll say it once more. In a world where like Hasbro isn't interested in doing anything particularly innovative, it's exciting to watch them do things that are fun. After all, blasters are supposed to be fun. Hasbro's good at making fun blasters. The dinosaur blasters, brilliant. This thing could go either way. All jokey jokes aside, uh, we've had mixed results with these. A lot of people have had issues with the alignment of the flipping mechanism, which has led to an overall just poor experience. And this one being the flagship coming in at 60 United States dollars, I picked it up at Target when I saw it on the shelf. It took a while, like I said, for these to get here. I don't know if this particular pallet was on a different boat and it just took them longer, but uh, hey, uh, it's here now and we're excited to review it for you. I would have started with the flagship if I could because I thought that this was gonna be the most exciting iteration of this concept. After all, the more darts you have on board, the more valuable it is to be able to go ch -ch and, and reload that way. So I think this is gonna suffer from the same thing that all of them have, which is to say, here it says fire one or two darts at a time. I'm assuming that's just how the trigger pull works. 32 flipping barrels, that makes sense. Um, the question is, is this the pump action? Yes, yeah, so what should be the pump action to fire and prime the blaster, the more comfortable place to put your offhand, is gonna be the mechanism by which the blaster flips. And then it looks like down here, we have an almost sling fire-esque mechanism that's going to be the vehicle by which you actually prime and fire the blaster. I do like that Hasbro in recent years has started using uh, the term rear loading to, uh, to describe certain features on blasters uh, explicitly because A, it is a classic example of Hasbro's marketing team consuming so much community content that they've started picking up our jargon and our shibboleths and putting them into their actual marketing materials and that's always oh so satisfying, but also because it's the wrong interpretation of rear loading. This is not a rear loading blaster. A rear loading blaster is one where you can put the dart in facing forward towards enemy and it's just ready to go. It's a cylinder effectively in its most common implementation where you can rear load the dart through the cylinder instead of having to turn the blaster around and go through the front. This isn't that. You're putting a dart in backwards through an aperture that just happens to flip forwards. But I digress. Let's get it out of the package. Let's give it a fair shake. It's gonna be a couple of these. Sustainable packaging, love to see it. Let's get it loaded up. All right, so some assembly required, but first, a little bit of engineering. These are effectively just eight dart smart AR chambers on each side, which is to say that this is like four rough cuts slapped together. And of course, Hasbro, despite creating identical molds for identical parts, uh, couldn't run them both through the painting cycle. So you get to choose uh, which side of the blaster you would like to have labeled a camera. I'm gonna go ahead and do it uh, El Tradicional style. We've got a relatively large, almost rubber uh, piece in here that I assume is gonna be the vehicle by which we flip, flip, flip Adelphia. But let's uh, slap these on and uh, see where we wind up. Okay, all right, uh, blaster is front heavy. There's no nice way to say that or dance around it. This stock should be extendable to kind of compensate for that, and it doesn't seem like it is. It's actually a very handsome injection molded stock. I will give it to Hasbro there. This is one of the better lever action stocks they've done. I like how comfortable the grip is in terms of like the actual grip and how you fit into here so that you're clearly designed to have your hand in the priming mechanism while you're gripping the blaster. Then you move your thumb out of an admittedly very comfortable channel for your thumb to prime like that back and forth and then you're right there. Uh, clearly you're supposed to grip the blaster using the flipping mechanism, which helps distribute some of the weight a little bit. Ambi uh, people will prefer this just because when your arm gets tired from holding this massive front end, you'll be relieved to find out that you could switch comfortably. As far as firing the blaster goes, it's exactly like how a rough cut goes. It uses that firing pattern you can see there, and uh, that's air delivery through a marginal plunger tube in the blaster, through those rubber apertures, into the Smart AR, and then into the eight dart Smart AR system, which is to say there's a lot of dead space. Uh, so there's a lot of priming force, specifically because you need to be able to get through all of that dead air and still have a reasonable performance. Something we'll evaluate in a second when we go over the chronograph. 
again, I was not super pleased with my Flip 16, largely because when I was using the flipping mechanism, it didn't flip. And if you have a flip blaster that doesn't align itself properly, what's the point, Hasbro? So uh, let's see. Let's just see how we do. So is it locked? Oh my God, the slide actually stays locked in place. You can't flip at a moment's notice. And I wanna applaud Hasbro for that. I think that that's really smart. Otherwise, due to the massive weight of this and the by and large children who would be using it, there'd be a lot of accidental half primes. And I think that that's pretty smart. So there's a fully ambi this side and this side mechanism here by which you can detach the flipping doohickey and then you can activate it. And that was actually pretty crisp. I mean, that's six flips in a row and they all appear to have aligned properly. What if we do it softly? Nope, no matter how you do it. So ironically, this is the best flipping mechanism. It doesn't seem to have the same sort of a clutch system in it that allowed for those errors. I think that this is... The blaster is bulky. It's a lot of blaster, but at $60, you kind of want to get a lot of blaster and the mechanism is clean. Like if you're into gimmicks, this is the best of the bunch. It's the most expensive of the bunch, but this is fine. I mean, I, I hate that every time I review a Hasbro product these days, I'm like pleasantly surprised when they're good. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the consumer market we're in right now. And uh, this one's great. I mean, I... Sweet. The design is good. The stock is comfortable. It's very front heavy, but to achieve this mechanism and this gimmick, it has to be. And they fixed whatever the funky clutch is. I, I don't know if I just finally got a good one or what's going on there, but either way, I am, uh, I'm pleased with, uh, pleased with this blaster. Let's go ahead and take it downstairs and see if it gets anywhere close to elite performance. But again, you're buying the double shot gimmick, particularly with the staggerable shots a la half pull full pull. And so even if it doesn't get like the full 70 FPS, I think that I'd be happy with it. Flip, flip, do, 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 do. All right, guys, flip 32, chronograph. It's definitely not coming out 257. Let's see what it actually does. I think we've got left, then right, then hello, Jinx. Are you coming over to play with the chronograph? Don't do that, sweetheart. 38, that can't be right. Uh, error. Okay. Now of note, those low numbers are the very end of the smart AR. The further down you go, the worse the, uh, the performance is going to be. Dang, it is hard to get chronograph readings on a dual stage blaster. Okay. Did it not fire either of those? That's very strange. I was so proud of this blaster. And now here, let's just Okay, so it fired them that time. Let's uh, let's get completely fresh data. These are two full racks of eight each, and uh, Jinx is out of the way, so this should be good. By good, I mean incredibly frustrating, actually. 65, error two. Part of it is just the accuracy of elite darts makes it very difficult to. Error three, 47. 60, 59. So I think it's pretty safe to say that errors and soft shots aside, you're looking at something around 60. Again, firing, we'll put these last four down range, kind of get an actual range estimate as well as a spread. There's no way we're going to be able to hit that target, but uh, man. All right, so we're barely getting 25 foot ranges. The fence is right about there and they're nowhere close to clearing, they're dropping into it. Uh, so I think it's safe to say that this is not a performance blaster in the slightest. This is very much a for giggles basement blaster if you just don't wanna reload and have 32 shots. I'm sure it would be a lot of fun for that general scenario. I mean, it would be okay for like dorm wars, but you're definitely not hitting anything down the hallway with it. This is your, uh, your room clearing blaster when you just wanna, I wish that they, this is maybe my only complaint. And again, I wanna end on a high note because I'm just so proud of them for getting their gimmick right for once that it actually flips. But they really, 
I think that they missed the mark in terms of like how the ergonomics of human beings work. The prime for this blaster should be the pump action, and then the flip should be the very awkward, very uncomfortable sling fire mechanism. And there's no reason that it couldn't have been that way other than uh, it's easier from a mechanics perspective to have your gear train directly under the flipping mechanism as opposed to run it through the blaster from the lever action. But I don't know, that's my only gripe. Other than that, I'm thrilled that it works. I think that it's $60 for a flagship full of good, good gimmicks. It's, it's fairly priced compared to other Nerf blasters. Obviously there's way better blasters at that price point on the market, but uh, we're, we're here to talk about the Flip 32. We'll let that go for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below, let me know. Is this enough to change your mind on the Flip series? Do you think that you would give it a shot now or are you already bought into the Flip series and you're excited to complete the collection? Either way, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. As always, much love, blast on, drag out. <laughs>